Good afternoon to all of you here. Welcome to another week of our Facebook live training today. Um, it is my favorite time of the week because I get to connect with you and teach you a simple strategies to get you one step closer to your pregnancy dream. Now, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Katrin Chong and I'm the fertility dietitian who help women and couple to optimize their diet for fertility with simple and easy action steps. Now, my job is to help you whether you are just starting out to planning for a family or if you are currently trying to conceive or if you have been struggling with fertility issue, my job is to help you to optimize your preconception nutrition plan and diet to make sure that we are maximizing that chances of conceiving. So today we are going to talk about very interesting topics. We are going to uh, really helping you to have more clarity surrounds coffee uh, or caffeine uh, versus fertility. Do you need to give up coffee while you are trying to conceive? Um, do you need to completely um, quit coffee or even think about other food that contain caffeine that you are currently taking? So today episode is I want to help you to really get clear on what are the food and drink that contain caffeine how much can you still have or do you need to completely quit them and lastly how to help you to reduce your caffeine intake without the withdrawal syndrome so this is what i'm going to teach you today so make sure you listen to the entire training class today and i will be sharing with you some real life action tips and action step to help you to minimize your caffeine intake and to answer all the questions about caffeine that you have with fertility. All right, now let's kick off today's class. Why caffeine is a concern while you're trying to conceive and during pregnancy. So let's first look at what is caffeine. Caffeine is a natural occurring compound that commonly present in fruits, leaves and the beans of coffee, uh, cacao and also guarana plants, right? So many of you when think about caffeine, you may only think about coffee, but in fact, um, caffeine can present in tea, uh, cocoa drink, uh, soft drinks, energy drink, and also some of the chocolate and your energy bars. It may be also present in over-counter medications such as uh, cough syrup and also some supplement products or if you do have any protein shakes or any weight loss shakes as well, that's where it could be also another hidden source of caffeine that you need to watch out for. Now, why are we so concerned about caffeine intake, uh, especially during pregnancy and possibly while you're trying to get pregnant? The reason why is because first, caffeine is a stimulant. It adds to excite your brain and your nervous system of the body. So I want you to think about how do you feel after you drink a, a, a couple of glasses of uh, or cups of coffee, right? Uh, so for example, let's just say after you drink coffee, immediately one or two hours after, you will start to feel more alert. You feel more energetic and able to focus better, right? Um, the problem is if you do consume a large amount, some of you may experience um, difficulty in sleeping, uh, severe headache, or you might start to get stomach upset and even causing you trouble with your heartbeat as well. So uh, again, depending on how much caffeine you are drinking right now, how much you can tolerate and how sensitive you are in terms of general health perspective. But today we are going to look at the latest evidence around caffeine intake during pregnancy and fertility and what you should be aware or worried. Okay, so the first thing we're going to look at is in terms of fertility. Now, the fact, uh, in fact, in terms of the study looking at the impact on fertility, I have to say though, the current research 
uh, it's still showing a mixed result, meaning that it is still unclear whether there is a positive or negative impact in terms of um, fertility. Um, and often this is because currently there's very limited study and they are still based on largely a low quality type of study. And hence, uh, we're still not able to draw very clear conclusion what is the effect of caffeine on fertility. However, I want to highlight to you in terms of when it comes to caffeine intake during pregnancy, it is very clear that you definitely need to limit your caffeine intake because it has been associated with a higher pregnancy complica complication risk with a high caffeine intake. So let me explain to you a little bit more in detail. So basically, the concern was because caffeine can cross the placenta. So when you get pregnant, if you do drink a high amount of caffeine, so potentially your baby caffeine intake could be similar to yours as well, depending on how quickly the caffeine was cleared from your body system. So for example, the rate of clearance of caffeine basically slowed down during your first half of your pregnancy and even slowed down about one third during the second and third final trimester uh, during the pregnancy. So which means the caffeine is going to hang around a little bit longer in your system and also potentially in your baby system as well. Now we also know that caffeine can limit the nutrient transfer to your baby uh, due to the reduced placenta blood flow as well. Um, so in the narrative, in fact, a latest review study, narrative review study, it has shown that caffeine consumption during pregnancy is reliable um, associated with miscarriage, stillbirth, low birth weight, and also associated with some long-term future health issue as well for your baby. So there's no doubt that definitely during pregnancy, that's where we have to be very careful how much caffeine intake you are having. Now, maybe you're saying right now, I hear you, Catherine, but does that mean I have to quit? you know, my coffee or caffeine completely? This is definitely one of the questions that I often get asked with my one-on-one -on -one coaching session with my client. And I'm glad that you asked. So first, I want you to ask yourself this question, right? To assess how much caffeine you are actually having in your diet. And I'm going to give you this very simple guide so you can assess your diet right now to find out if you're having an excessive amount of coffee or caffeine. So question number one is how much coffee are you drinking? So the current recommended serving of safety limit of caffeine for pregnant women, including for mom who breastfeed, is up to about 200 milligram per day of caffeine intake. Right. So to give you an example, this is equivalent to roughly about two cups of moderate strain coffee per day. So depending on the brewing methods as well, uh, if you do drink a stronger coffee, then the more caffeine it contains. So as a general rule, it's approximately about two cups of moderate strain of coffee per day. Uh, that is kind of within the safety recommended limit of coffee intake or caffeine intake that you have on a daily basis. So question number one to know how much coffee you are actually uh, uh, having right now or, or drinking right now that will help you to guide you better whether or not you are having that excessive amount. So I want you to ask yourself how much coffee you are drinking right now. Are you having more than the two standard cup of coffee uh, a day? So that's question number one for you. Now, question number two is, how do you know whether you're having an uh, excessive amount of coffees? You also want to ask yourself or look at your diet right now. Do you also drink any green or black tea um, or any soft drink like cola drink or any form of energy drink? Because this type of beverage also contain caffeine and often people uh, forget about this, this group of um, beverage. 
So again, for Zamba, um, if you are someone who currently drink about four cans of regular soft drink or energy drink, you would definitely already have exceeded that safety limit of about 200 milligram of caffeine intake per day. Same for tea as well. If you do drink somewhere like say more than two cups a day, depending how strong it is, you would also already exceed that safety limit. So I want to ask yourself, apart from from uh, coffee, are you drinking any of this beverage? That could also guide you uh, to find out whether you're having an excessive amount of caffeine. Now, question number two for you. Do you take any protein shakes or any fertility supplement that contain caffeine in there? Now, this is a tricky one. So um, quite often people also miss out this group of category. So basically what you want to do right now, if you're unsure, have a look at your supplements that you're taking right now or any protein powder uh, or fertility supplement or fertility tea that you're drinking right now. I want you to look at, at the back of the packaging and to see whether does the product include any um, caffeine in there. So I want you to also so screen through the ingredient list that will help you to better guide you as well in terms of whether you are having too much of coffee or caffeine sorry caffeine intake all right now once you have done a self-assessment with these three questions right next up is how do you reduce your caffeine intake without the withdrawal syndrome right so if you have so used to drinking a large amount of caffeine Quitting caffeine completely, it can be hard initially, but doesn't mean that you can't do it. So I want to share with you my three simple tips with you today. How can you start to reduce caffeine intake without the withdrawal syndrome? All right, so step number one, I want you to start cut out one cup of coffee or one can of your energy or soft drink every day. So just start by cutting one this week and next week I want you to start by cutting two, right? So slowly up the volume, okay? And I want you to also start to set yourself a goal, no more coffee or no more energy drink after noon, so after your lunch for example, okay? So I want you to cut your overall intake by eventually less than 50% of your usual intake right now. So that's step number one. And step number two, when you master step number one, I want you to start switch to a caffeine free or some of the lower caffeine options for you. So for example, you can consider a decaf coffee or decaf tea, um, or to start um, to try something new like a herbal infusion uh, tea like ginger or peppermint tea or even rubus tea um, and see whether you like them. And try to also substitute with like, a, for example, a chicory or dandelion root tea. They are pretty similar like a coffee, but they are absolutely caffeine free options for you. So that's something that you can give it a go and see whether you like them. And lastly, my step number three, but certainly not least, is my favorite personal tip, which is always have your water bottle around you. Always bring your water bottle with you all the time or put it at the side of your desk. And I want you to start having that habit of um, at least drinking that half a bottle, sorry, full bottle of, say for example, about 750 mils of your full bottle before your lunch and another full bottle close to a little water before your dinner, right? So in that way, you will know that you at least already consume about 1.5 liter of water per day. So start getting the habits of keep sipping your water while you're working in front of computer, um, just every 50 minutes or 30 minutes. That will really help you to also minimize your caffeine intake. Now, there you have it, my three simple tips to help you to minimize the caffeine intake without the withdrawal syndrome. Now let's recap what we have discussed so far. So we have talked about why caffeine intake is a concern for fertility and pregnancy. 
the three questions you can assess your diet right now to find out whether you're having excessive amount of caffeine intake while you're trying to cut conceive and also during pregnancy and lastly is my three simple step plans on how to minimize your caffeine intake without the withdrawal syndrome now is your turn to tell me how what you have learned today and how you're going to implement in your daily action plan so tell me what is the one thing you are going to do today to help you to minimize your caffeine intake leave a comment down below and share with me i would love to celebrate your win with you now remember it is impossible to do everything all at once what I want to remind you is to start with something that you can easily implement today. Start with just one simple step today and think about how you can do better tomorrow. All right, then if you enjoyed today's episode, don't forget to press the subscribe button so you'll get notified every week when I go live and to answer your questions. And don't forget, if you enjoy our episode as well, don't forget to share with your friends and leave a review on our channel. I would appreciate it. So thank you so, so much for joining us for today. And I will see you again same time next week and same place. Bye for now, everyone.